Vault Health has the first and only FDA-authorized saliva test for COVID, uh, monitored through telemedicine. And the CEO joins us this morning. Jason Feldman is the CEO of Vault Health. Jason, welcome. Thank you. It's good to be here. You've got uh, distribution into some of the major sports leagues, and I know some universities. Can you just uh, explain to people the science between a saliva test and a swab test? And if this is just as good or better, why isn't everyone doing saliva? Well, that's a good question. And actually, it is just as good. And, and the reason is that both are PCR tests. These are, these are highly sensitive, highly specific tests that are proven across a, a massive swath of people around the world. If you're going to find stuff, in this case, the SARS-CoV-2 virus, uh, these tests are the most likely to be able to do that. They are looking for the genes that are associated with the virus. Now, saliva is a relatively new assay. It started in uh, April uh, with the launch of the program that Rutgers University uh, launched uh, with the FDA's authorization. And we have been aggressively across the country now making it available in as many places as possible. The 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 best part was that the sports leagues started to go back to practice and started using saliva as a much better option than, than nasal swabs all day long. So that ended up letting universities and businesses and the rest of the country understand that it is an option. Right. Is there a difference between lab results, which I think still take less time than a lot of the swabs, uh, versus doing something at home where you're really relying on the uh, user to, to use to diagnose through telemedicine, but basically do it on their own? Well, the, the best part about what we've been able to do together with the Rutgers team is that we've launched a, a test that is available at home. It's a, it's a physician prescribed test, but we're making it massively available across all 50 states that is supervised. So when you actually use this particular test, you're at home not having to go to a local testing center, which is great by itself because we're not putting pressure on more uh, PPE that's being wasted on testing. And we're not exposing people to potential risks with other practitioners who might be taking care of sick people. So we're doing that and then we're helping to guide the process of doing this test. So asking somebody in front of a video conference like we're having now, spitting in a tube, collecting a good sample and getting that back to the lab in an overnight envelope from UPS, that is happening in rapid form. And so as a result, we're able to then turn turn the, the test results around in about 48 hours. It's, it's record time. And we're doing that because we're managing the supply chain really well. We're trying to work with people who have very specific needs that have to get results back fast, and we're planning to be able to deliver those results because of the, the speed at which we're moving. Right. How about capacity, though? Uh, how many of these can you make and distribute uh, given the level of demand? Well, that's part of what was unique about this program, that when we started it, we said saliva is going to be something far more interesting than having that, that brain torture device shoved up your nose uh, than the, the nasal swab. So we ended up buying a, a tremendous amount of capacity in, in, in the uh, chemistry and in, in, the, in the tubes themselves. So we're working with all of our partners to make sure that there is today about 80,000 tests seven days a week available. And then we're going to keep on pushing that as we now come into back to school season with the number of universities and colleges and K through 12 programs and businesses, frankly, in the Fortune 100 that are bringing back tens of thousands of people to offices. We're making sure that we have enough to be able to serve them. And we look forward to pushing that to something north of about 100,000 tests a day. Uh, Jason, going back to Carl's earlier question about the pervasiveness of saliva versus the uh, the swab, uh, is cost a big factor here? I saw that uh, that your product costs about one hundred and fifty dollars per kit. Um, you know, for the average American, is there a, a chance, a possibility that that cost will come down uh, and that they will be able to take it more frequently? Absolutely. That's one of the reasons why working at scale is so important, because anything we can do to leverage the supply chain, anything that we can do to bring that cost down. By, as an example, one of the choices we made working with UPS was that we wanted to give people those fast turn times. That, that's, that's almost impossible to find mostly across the country today with these 10 and 12 and 14 day returns on results. It's, it's incomprehensible to any of us on how anybody can wait that long to know whether or not they're safe. So we're trying to get that cost down. We're working pretty aggressively, especially with the universities, just because of the large numbers of people to bring that cost down lower. And then the other thing that's important is that the CARES Act mandated that the insurance payers pay for testing. And so we're putting programs into place now to help ensure that they are going to get coverage when they need it. Jason, finally, just on the integrity of testing themselves, and by the way, your background is, I hope you don't do that for every Zoom, because that is freaky back there, but um, uh, all, looks like a wreath almost. Yeah, 
kind of cool. Um, not a pretty read. But not Jason, a pretty read. The no. Uh, the integrity of the tests themselves, you know, you hear anecdotally, I'm sure everybody does. Well, I tested negative, but I was positive. Or I tested positive, but I had no symptoms and I think it was wrong. I mean, can we rely, broadly speaking, on all the tests that are out there right now, regardless of how long it actually takes to get the results back? And that is the question of questions. And I think that's what we're all worried about. It's what we refer to as the false positives and the false negatives. Now, you know, it, it's terrible to get a false positive, to actually be told that you're positive and then have to quarantine and, and, and worry that you're sick or, or making other people sick because you're sitting at home waiting for, you know, another test to know that you're not sick. Um, but the false negative rates are what we're most concerned about. That That is the one that is letting people, you know, loose in society, infecting other people, whether they're symptomatic or asymptomatic, believing that they're OK when, in fact, they're they're not. And one of the challenges is the nasal swab programs, which are, again, just as good as a genetic test. We're sticking a swab way up into the nasal uh, pharyngeal cavity, dark, deep, dark place up near the brain. And if we don't get viral media on that swab or we don't get enough of it, we don't know that you're actually positive. The beautiful thing about saliva is we're putting about a one milliliter uh, amount of saliva in a tube, and we have a lot of virus in there. So if you're sick, you're going to get it caught in this tube. And the false negative rates of, of nasal swabs right now are tracking about 25 to 35 percent, which means one in three are coming back telling you that you're safe when you're not. With saliva, that number is less than one percent. And it's really because of the administration, because you're able to put a lot of media into this tube. That's what we're very concerned about in America. And I think if people are positive, we want to make sure that they get retested. And if people are positive one time, they might want to get another test just to make sure that they're not sick uh, ongoing. This is going to be the thing that we're going to have to keep working with each other. And we've got to find ways to get the cost of testing down because this is not sustainable if everybody doesn't have access to it.